This is Healthcare Today with your host, Kelly Roberts. Welcome to Healthcare Today. Today I'm on location with Dr. Jared Toman at the Sterling Center in Moultrie, Georgia. Thank you for letting us be here. Thanks for coming by today. Yes, a beautiful new location. Yes, now we're going to open up and I want you to tell us about this new location here at the Sterling Center. Well, the physical location, uh, we're located just off Veterans Parkway, very convenient for all of our patients coming in, uh, but we're still on the grounds of the hospital. Uh, but it is, a, it is a brand new building. Sometimes it's a brand new street, hard to find out the GPS. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's probably best to go to our website for more specifics. Okay. And then there's something a little unique about the Sterling Center. So let's tell people what the Sterling Center is all about. I think I can best illustrate that with a, with a quick story. Okay. Uh, when I first got here three years ago, uh, I kept having the same conversation with a lot of my colleagues, and they had, you know, well, with me as well. Uh, how can we do things better? Or, you know, well, I have this patient. Um, we need you to see uh, Dr. Dr. Melton first for some bariatric surgery, then you come to me for a knee replacement. How can we better coordinate these services? Um, and I think we all came to the realization that if we were located in the same building, we could better do this. We could offer our patients more options. We could do it in a more coordinated and reliable fashion and really give people what they want in terms of accessibility to healthcare. Okay, so that collaborative effort obviously makes you unique. We've been doing it behind the scenes for a very long time, but we decided to codify the relationship and be in the same building. Fortunately, the hospital uh, uh, here at Colquitt Regional uh, recognized our effort and got behind it, uh, and uh, we're happy to, uh, uh, of course, be in close partnership with them in providing the care that we do. Okay, and so let's walk me through this. So, like you said, a typical patient, it's that patient may be in what you consider a disease state of needing a knee replacement, but also mm -hmm. struggle with weight loss issues? Well, I would never presume to comment on the expert, uh, expertise of my colleagues. Right. However, yeah, a lot of these things go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. uh, so for instance, uh, just to give you a quick narrative, uh, we did have uh, several patients that uh, needed to lose weight before I could safely offer them a joint. Uh, and so we combined the uh, bariatric expertise of Dr. Aho, Dr. Baker, and Dr. Melton here uh, with my abilities as an orthopedic surgeon and really took care of the entire patient at the same time towards the goal of getting them the quality of life that they want, both in terms of the weight reduction in her case as well as the pair of new knees. And I guess that's great for the patient because you have kind of a care plan and you're, you are right here together. Yes, so if one and has a question, There's nothing accessible. like proximity uh, to make sure that things get done right. Okay, so that's one benefit, certainly, for the patient. Correct. Tell me who else may be a candidate for coming to the Sterling Center. Well, we offer a full range of, uh, of uh, surgical services, mostly centered around improving quality of life. So, for instance, I'm an orthopedic surgeon. We also have a podiatrist, a, a, foot, a foot surgeon. Uh, we have a GI doctor, Dr. Carballo. Uh, we have uh, our uh, urologist, Dr. Will Fong, of course, our entire general surgery team. Uh, and we hope to be adding more on uh, in the near future. Okay, so it's just kind of like they can have an encompass of care right here. Correct, see. but our, our main thrust is providing coordination of those services that improve quality of life. And more importantly, not letting the disease progress to the point where, as you said, it becomes a disease state. We want to intervene early. We want to recognize it early. We want to give people the full spectrum of options before, for instance, like with, with my specialty, we're forced to do a knee replacement. Or if we do do a knee replacement, I want that joint to be in as good a shape as we can get uh, before we actually expose the patient to surgery so the outcome is the best we can offer. And I imagine sometimes patients come to see one physician and don't realize they are in need of another physician's Correct. help. And Correct. so you help them identify that? Yes ma'am. Yes ma'am. And do. get them on a path of care? As much as we can. Okay. And then as far as um, navigating through, like you said, you have, let's go through the service lines again. So you have mm -hmm. general surgery. We have general surgery, uh, which of course has their sp uh, spectrum of activities. Uh, we also have a very prominent bariatric center here. Uh, we've done the most orbearers, I believe, of any uh, center in the country except for uh, one center down in Puerto Rico. Okay. Uh, which is a minimally invasive weight, weight loss procedure. Uh, we have urology, we have gastroenterology, uh, gastroenterology and podiatry. Okay, and these are all board certified physicians. And when you talked about your relationship, let's talk a little bit about that with the hospital. Mm -hmm. Because that's got to play a key role. Yes, ma'am. Okay. We well, you know the hospital, uh, Colquitt Regional, for a long time, its main thrust has been quality and safety. So how do we measure them? How do we report them? And how do we compare ourselves to the best centers on a national level to make sure patients right here in southwest Georgia are getting the best care? Okay. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more in detail about some of those service lines. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back. At Colquitt Regional Medical Center, there are a lot of reasons to say we're an exceptional hospital.
but we know it's our people who truly make us an exceptional hospital. After years of dealing with pain and instability in my left knee, um, I scheduled a visit with Dr. Toman at the Sterling Center um, to see what my options were. Um, Dr. Toman and his team were phenomenal in, in helping me to understand the issues that I was having, and together we ultimately decided that I needed a total knee replacement. Um, at my age, that, that is a big decision, so I certainly wanted the best care um, and, and treatment while I had my knee replacement because of my, my age and the fact that there's a lot of things I want to do um, and I really wanted a good outcome. I chose Cockett Regional Medical Center because of the total joint program and the multidisciplinary team that they use. Um, it, they have services available for pain management, um, rehab is a big part of it, education. I got a lot of information prior to my surgery to help me to understand what I was going to go through during the surgery and then after surgery exactly what to expect so that I was prepared. Um, I do think that that helped me tremendously in my recovery. The physical therapy staff in the hospital and at the Vereen Center were incredible. They helped me get up and walk the day of surgery and I walked even a lot further the day after surgery whenever I was discharged from the hospital. It was a little hard to, to fathom going home after such a big surgery, but I did it and I did very well. Continue to get therapy from the Marine Center and, and it healed very nicely. So I'm three months out, I'm doing things that I could not do before surgery. Um, I don't take Advil every day. Um, my pain is a lot better, but the stability um, really was what was limiting my life. Um, and I'm 46 years old, a lot of things that I want to do, and I'm able to do that now after my total joint replacement. For anybody who thinks that it may be time for a total joint replacement or an evaluation for that possibility, I highly recommend the total joint program at Colquitt Regional Medical Center. Welcome back, and once again, I'm on location with Dr. Jared Toman here at the Sterling Center. Now, before we went to break, we were talking about the Sterling Center, but tell me how y'all came up with the name. The Sterling Center. <laughs> it's a it's a bit of a funny story, you know. We we're we we're trying to think of a of a name for this new organization, and uh, what we wanted to do is, you know, we kept using words like, well, we want the the uh, new facility to have a sterling reputation, and so we we're sort of using that as a as a thought experiment on which to design all of our processes around. And as we kept using it and using it, it sounded like uh, a better name. Um, but I think the other side of that name uh, connotes the responsibility that we have to our patients. Silver, sterling silver, only stays beautiful and useful if you constantly polish it and keep it up to date. And I think that's a lot of what we're doing here in terms of giving our patients the best and most current options to address what they need to have changed in their lives. Okay, and this is kind of a unique c collaborated effort here. Do you see many of these across the country? That No, there, there really are not uh, in settings uh, that are more rural, these larger multi-specialty uh, groups, especially not across different subspecialties of medicine. Uh, so we're trying something a little different, uh, but so far it seems to be working pretty well. Great. And you have a relationship here with the hospital, Colquitt Regional Medical Center? Yes, ma'am. We're proud to be allied with Colquitt Regional. Uh, you know, Colquitt Regional uh, for a very long time has been at the forefront of trying to provide the best and safest care to the patients. I'm not sure if you know, but uh, since uh, 2014 we've had seven consecutive A awards for patient safety, which really puts us in the top tier nationally. So the work that we're trying to do here, I think, is a very logical extension of the good work already established and done by the hospital. Right, and with that partnership too, that is another thing that makes you so unique. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and then for patients, like we talked a little bit about before, break, benefit and seeing multi-services mm -hmm. in this one area. What is somebody that maybe needs to see someone and do they get a referral from their physician to come to the Sterling Center? Can they call? Mm -hmm. We get referrals from all around uh, the South Georgia region. Uh, usually it's a referral from a primary care doctor, but mm -hmm. sometimes patients uh, call us on their own. Uh, we invite anyone who feels like they may benefit from our services to either visit our website or give us a call. Okay, and I, again, I think I mentioned this, but it's nice you may come here to see you as an orthopedist, but realize you have another problem, and it's nice you have partners right here that can right. give complete multi-care. Exactly. exactly. Okay, we're going to get into some of those details of multi-care. We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back.
At Call Quit Regional Medical Center, there are a lot of reasons to say we're an exceptional hospital. But we know it's our people who truly make us an exceptional hospital. Welcome back once again at the Sterling Center in Moultrie, Georgia with Dr. Jared Taman. Now, Dr. Taman, you are one of the physicians here at the Sterling Center and your specialty is orthopedics. Yes, ma'am. Tell me a little bit about yourself and you do orthopedic surgery? Yes, I do. Uh, I trained in orthopedic surgery up in uh, Boston after graduating from med school at Columbia in Manhattan. Uh, following uh, my training up in Boston, I spent uh, four years in service in the United States military, uh, mostly doing a lot of downrange trauma uh, at Walter Reed. Uh, since my wife and I decided to make a Southwest Georgia home, we've uh, increased the size of our family by about 100%, so uh, we're <laughs> going to be here for quite some time. Good. And then tell me a little bit about what, I mean, you have a, you treat all of orthopedics. I do. Um, I'm an orthopedic surgeon in, mm -hmm. in general practice, but my special interest is hip, uh, knee, and uh, shoulder replacement, joint replacement. Okay. And that is something that has evolved quite rapidly in the past few years, is that correct? It really has, uh, both in terms of the technology available to, to help patients, but also in terms of where and how we implement and deploy that technology. You know, it was the case maybe maybe as uh, little as 10 or 15 years ago that joint replacement was really considered a salvage operation. When you just can't get around anymore, that's when you consider it. That's really not the case. Uh, the population seeking replacement now is much younger, much more active because the technology has evolved. Uh, and it's very exciting to be a part of this evolution in my particular field of medicine. And you talk about that, and that is important. Do they sometimes find themselves limited to certain activities that they enjoy, whether it's a sport? Because you're talking about younger, Correct. possibly adults. Say maybe they are an avid golfer or a tennis player. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about that. Do you see that? They come in and they're just... Yes, ma'am. It's interesting you should say tennis. Matter of fact, just last week, I had a woman in her 70s who still played singles tennis. Wow. Now, quite frankly, she had such bad arthritis, I don't know how she was doing it, but I think it was getting to the point with her where she was actually functioning at a very high level. She was still mm -hmm. playing singles tennis and wanted to get back to that. She didn't just want to get from point A to point B, which is traditionally what joint replacement uh, has been has been thought of, right? It right. just gets you just barely around the house. Uh, we're seeing people more in her position now who want to maintain a higher level of activity. Uh, and certainly not everyone who walks in is a candidate for a joint, and I'm, I'm the first to tell them that. Uh, but I think when you balance the right x-rays, the right, mm -hmm. the right goals, the right uh, standard of health, uh, the right patient and the right aspirations, that's what makes the best patient. And I think the real art of this is not just saying one size fits all, oh, you have arthritis, you need a replacement. It's balancing all those different factors to help the patient make the right decision. And is that a common factor that you see people that need joint? Is it because of arthritis or is it just over time, maybe over usage if they are athletic? Yes, um, a, lot of, a lot of the same uh, causes uh, lead to the same solution, right? Mm -hmm. So um, no matter how they, they got there, uh, we have to use the facts we have at the, at the time uh, and help the patients make the right or select the right option for them. Right. So, and again, the benefits are they're getting back to their daily living. I want to focus on the benefits of going on and Not doing something Not just daily it. living. They're getting back to what they want to do. The activities that they enjoy. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned, and I'll be right back. If you're a health professional and would like to learn more about becoming a guest on Healthcare Today, please contact Kelly Roberts at 446-4074 or email her at kelly.roberts at waob.com. Tell me how the day unfolds Traffic fast, or traffic slow This feeling is so fine, I gotta say You're just a touch away You're everywhere, got you everywhere Everywhere I go whoa, Go everywhere I go whoa, whoa, whoa. Everywhere I go Orbera is the latest innovation in non-surgical weight loss. Orbera is proven to help you lose three times the weight of diet and exercise alone. The Orbera procedure is now available at Cockwood Regional. 
Welcome back, and once again, I'm at the Sterling Center in Moultrie, Georgia, with Dr. Jared Toman, orthopedic surgeon. Now, Dr. Toman, right before we went to break, we were talking about hip replacements, mm -hmm. knee replacements, mm -hmm. overall joint replacements, and that is a specialty of yours. Um, commonly, we I seem to hear more about people having knee replacements, um, and I want to talk a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. What actually happens? What's you know usually the cause? So tell to me a little bit about knee replacements. Well, sure. Uh, you know, you're entirely right. Uh, we do more knee replacements in this country than hip replacements. Mm -hmm. But I got to tell you, that ratio is changing a little bit. Um, as hip replacements get better, uh, more reliable, and involve less downtime and less life lifetime risks, we're able to offer them to a broader and broader spectrum of people suffering with hip pain. Uh, I personally go in through the front. I do the anterior total hip approach. Uh, and uh, a lot of my patients, uh, feel very little discomfort or downtime at all. As a matter of fact, uh, when I do a knee replacement, I tell patients, okay, it's gonna take you about a week to forgive me and about a <laughs> month to be really glad you had it done. Okay. Hip replacements are a little bit different. Patients said, I don't, don't know why I didn't do this a year ago. Okay. But just going, getting back to the knees, uh, we happen to have here uh, a knee model, okay. okay? And this is a normal, healthy knee. Well, okay. when you have knee arthritis, the joint surface, the place where this bone touches this bone, wears out. It becomes a very hard, uh, a very rough surface that generates friction. It generates fluid, swelling, pain. That's the genesis, the cause of knee pain associated with arthritis. If we kind of take a closer look here, these are the normal cartilage surfaces here. Okay. And as it wears out, uh, this nice smooth white surface becomes uh, basically just bone and I sometimes tell my patients uh, you know your knee is bone on bone and that's very true the cartilage is gone uh, so when we see a knee that looks like that uh, we talk about ways to change the anatomy so that you don't have any more pain specifically a knee replacement takes these joint surfaces and just removes them and replaces them with metal and plastic okay um, specifically what we do is we don't do this <laughs> we just very gently move the patella the over to the side, move the kneecap to the side, and that gives us access to the joint. Okay. The joint replacement itself uh, only takes, you know, usually less than an hour unless there's some deformity or some other complicating factor, in which case you just take your time and do it right. Uh, and again, usually my patients stay in house for about 36 hours. Okay. Is it common to see if you have one knee done, you may have to have the other knee done? Usually we're built the same on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, unless there's been an isolated trauma or an injury to one side versus the other, okay. then yes, usually uh, both knees will need to get addressed eventually. However, um, I like to do one at a time. And the okay. reason is, if you can put more weight on the knee we've just done, usually the symptoms on the other side decrease. And in doing okay. that, we spare people the risks, the pain of having both knees done at the same time. Okay. And then you talked about putting an impl or a device in there that helps mm -hmm. on with that bone on bone. So what is their actual downtime in regards to getting back to normal activities? It depends what you mean by downtime. Okay. Uh, we get our patients up the same day of surgery. Uh, as you might know, uh, Calcutt Regional just got its gold seal certification from the largest hospital accrediting body in the country uh, called JCO. It's, it's kind of a big deal uh, for us, especially being so small. Uh, but one of their metrics is how quickly and how far do our joint replacement patients walk immediately after surgery. So one of our big thrusts is using multimodal pain control to make sure our patients not only have the best experience, but get the best function as quickly as possible. Okay, and that's probably, you're, you're seeing, as you've been in orthopedics for a while, that all of this is changing um, <laughs> and getting more a, advanced to be walking the day of surgery. Yes, it, it's really evolving, uh, and it's evolving for the betterment of our patients. Uh, we try to get, uh, like I said, people up same day of surgery. We try to get them walking with minimal assistance uh, with, by the time they leave the hospital. Now, again, safety first. There's no shame in using a cane, as I say. But right. uh, we try to get people as normal as possible, as quickly as possible. And I'm thinking about what viewers may be at, thinking themselves, is, is it once, will you ever have to have another replacement? Does, how long do they last? Well, that, that's a great question. Uh, you know, when newer hip replacements first came out, remember, this was during the Reagan administration almost 30 years ago. So a lot of the numbers that you'll see if you Google it or you look on the internet will tell you a hip or knee will last about 20 years. Right. Remember, that technology was developed 30 years ago, put right. in patients, and followed over time. The technology that we're using now is leaps and bounds better. Um, in the old days, we used to uh, cement components into, let's say, hip replacements. Well, mm -hmm. now uh, we have them specially coated so the body actually grows into the metal and it literally becomes a part of you. Uh, 
you know, all the different manufacturers, you know, talk about their different uh, lifespans of, of the components. Uh, but our goal is to do one procedure and have that be the definitive procedure that the patient needs for the rest of their lives. Okay. And again, it's probably on a case by case, but like Correct. you said, typically. Now, it's also like buying a tire, right? You know, the tire lasts uh, as, as many miles as you're going to put on it. So if somebody's mm -hmm. goal is to get back out there and start walking 15 miles a day, well, yeah, you're going to put some miles on it. Yep. Well, that's some great information. And then again, we talked about the downtime. The same mm -hmm. for hip. Pretty much as far well, as the device, the bone composite. I'll tell of. you, uh, I'm not the oldest guy in the room, but I am old enough uh, to have trained uh, going in uh, via the lateral or posterior approach, which is the way that they had done it since Sir Charnley came up with the hip replacement almost 40 years ago. Uh, the anterior hip replacement really has been a game changer. Again, it's, um, it's an operation uh, that takes a little time to learn, mm -hmm. uh, but I took the time to do that while I was in military service because it was very hard for me to sit in front of a patient who was in their late 20s, 30s, 40s, who served our country, who has a post-traumatic deformity of the hip, and tell them that they have lifetime dislocation precautions. The anterior total hip um, allows me to offer patients minimal downtime, mm -hmm. minimal uh, lifetime precautions, immediate weight bearing, and you use a real-time x-ray machine, which allows me to rebuild the hip exactly as the body wants it to be. Okay, and when you're saying anterior, you mean are you going in from the front yes, of the hip? Because a lot of people say previously they went in through the back of the hip? They went in through the back or they went through the side. Those are good approaches, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're time tested and the outcomes have been adequate. Mm -hmm. But I think going in from the front offers the advantage of not having to cut any tendons or muscles. You use a natural plane in the body's anatomy, you sneak in through the muscles and at the end of surgery, they just snap right back together. Okay, and is that the procedure you did for it, whether it was a fracture or arthritic changes that deemed them for a, hip a replacement, candidate for hip yes. Okay, yes. great. And again, the same, are they up and walking? Same or day. Same day they're <laughs> walking? Yes, ma'am. And same about a downtime as far as, you know, what they can deem, they can do? No, with a total hip, the downtime is much less. Okay. Again, part of the reason we are focusing on getting ahead of the disease, not waiting till it, it is debilitating, is because you, although we can focus on the x-rays, we can see the arthritis, the things we can't see on the x-rays are the prime determinants of recovery. So that soft tissue envelope, the joint capsule, the muscles, patient's level of conditioning, and also how much they trust that leg all factor into how quickly patients get back to normal quality of life. Okay. So again, if someone comes in and they have no arthritis at all, they're not a candidate for a hip or knee replacement. Right. But I think once you start to see those arthritic changes, you can match them to the pain and the, and the disability the patient is experiencing, then you can offer them a good and reliable solution. Okay, great. We're going to take a quick break. Right. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. After years of dealing with pain and instability in my left knee, um, I scheduled a visit with Dr. Toman at the Serlin Center um, to see what my options were. Um, Dr. Toman and his team were phenomenal in, in helping me to understand the issues that I was having and together we ultimately decided that I needed a total knee replacement. Um, at my age that, that is a big decision so I certainly wanted the best care um, and, and treatment while I had my knee replacement because of my, my age and the fact that there's a lot of things I want to do um, and I really wanted a good outcome. I chose Cockle Regional Medical Center because of the total joint program and the multidisciplinary team that they use. Um, it, they have services available for pain management, um, rehab is a big part of it, education. I got a lot of information prior to my surgery to help me to understand what I was going to go through during the surgery and then after surgery exactly what to expect so that I was prepared. Um, I do think that that helped me tremendously in my recovery. The physical therapy staff in the hospital and at the Vereen Center were incredible. They helped me get up and walk the day of surgery and I walked even a lot further the day after surgery whenever I was discharged from the hospital. It was a little hard to, to fathom going home after such a big surgery, but I did it and I did very well. Continued to get therapy from the Vereen Center and, and it healed very nicely. So I'm three months out, I'm doing things that I could not do before surgery. Um, I don't take Advil every day. Um, my pain is a lot better, but the stability um, really was what was limiting my life. Um, and I'm 46 years old, a lot of things that I want to do, and I'm able to do that now after my total joint replacement. For anybody who thinks that it may be time for a total joint replacement or an evaluation for that possibility, I highly recommend the total joint program at Colquitt Regional Medical Center. Call Quit Regional Medical Center, there are a lot of reasons to say we're an exceptional hospital.
but we know it's our people who truly make us an exceptional hospital. Orbera is the latest innovation in non-surgical weight loss. Orbera is proven to help you lose three times the weight of diet and exercise alone. The Orbera procedure is now available at Colquitt Regional. If you're a health professional and would like to learn more about becoming a guest on Healthcare Today, please contact Kelly Roberts at 446-4074 or email her at kelly.roberts at waob.com. Welcome back, and once again, I'm on location here in Moultrie, Georgia at the Sterling Center with orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Jared Taman. Dr. Taman, we were talking about patients that you're helping with some hip re knee replacements. How important is the feedback that you get from your patients after these procedures? Tremendously important. Again, we're offering a quality of life procedure, and we want to make sure that we've achieved, achieved those objectives. There's a lot of people doing hip and knee replacements. Um, and again, we've been keeping this a, a sort of technical, talking about sort of the nuts and bolts. Right. But I think what people really care about is the question everybody asks but doesn't quite know how, is how am I going to do after this, after the surgery, after I go through this? And that's the question we're trying to answer here. Um, I'm currently collecting outcomes from patients. I'm using statistically validated outcome measures, the same ones they use at the big institutions like Harvard and Mayo, and we're trying to answer that in an honest fashion so that we can not only prove that we're providing the best care we can, but also compare ourselves to how national organizations are doing. And I think that's critically important, especially uh, when you're a newer organization, you want to make right. sure that the quality you're putting out uh, matches the effort that you're putting in. Uh, so I would invite every patient who comes in to participate in that data collection. Okay, and you probably use that too for your, you talked about educational, because mm -hmm. you've seen what patients have worked for patients going home and how you derive, you were talking about the pamphlet that you give patients, all of that well, comes correct. from feedback that you've gotten? Correct, feedback and also recognizing and adopting the best national standards. And that's something that, uh, well, for instance, uh, our Gold Seal certification was not easy, and we had to adopt a lot of those uh, very rigorous national standards. It took us a year and a 17-member team to accomplish, uh, but right now we are the smallest hospital in the state of Georgia and one of the smallest in all of the southeast to have that prestigious certification. That's great, and it's right here in Moultrie, Georgia. It's right here in Moultrie, Georgia. That's yes, right. Well, I definitely appreciate all your time here today and the great information, and I look forward to doing future segments with you. Well, thanks so, for coming out. Thank you. And if you'd like more information from Dr. Taman, you can reach out to him at the Sterling Center here in Moultrie, Georgia. We'll see you next time here on Healthcare Today.